Good day, folks. I'd like to talk to you about potential differences and how to utilize them properly. So I want to give you a few examples here of that. So how we can take advantage of pure potential. So I'm going to give you an example. Now what happens is um, why this may be misleading and not obvious straight from the start is to be able to take advantage of this system, which is basically reminiscent of the one wire system, you need to ha have a high voltage potential because that any high voltage will create a basically a um, it's basically an electric version of an electrostatic field. It's like a well, it is, but like an electric, but one that's electrically driven for free in better terms. So with that said, um, with the electric, you can create a continuous potential difference. The only difference with the way we're doing it is we're using a trigger to initiate it, hopefully for free. That's the goal anyways, and I'm going to discuss that. So again, one of the reasons why a lot of people, you know, they miss this part is it's not very easy observable, even though it works, well, in theory, at all voltages, just because the atmosphere and everything else, um, you need a high voltage to observe a medium voltage. So what happens is even using the traditional, let's say, trying to plug, run one wire on the meter uh, from your house mains, you're not going to get anything much, maybe millivolts or not even anything at all. But what happens is the story changes a lot with high voltage. For example, when you're using a Tesla coil, you drive your 60 hertz, but you know that takes a lot of energy because you're using the capacitors and the spark gap, you're discharging that. You're, you're, it's a heavy current thing, but the end result is at the end of the Tesla coil, whatever you run on there is one wire. It's just the Tesla coil, to my opinion, is a very inefficient way to drive the system because you got to pay for it. We could do the same thing without having to pay for it. So, for example, we could use any kind of um, high frequency AC generator. So um, the reason I say high frequency is because it works better, but basically any AC. So we can start with, uh, let's say, an inverter here. So we're going to have our battery input. So this is going to be our 12 volt battery here. Our plus and our negative. Okay. So we're going to connect our inverter on that. So this is just going to be a trigger. So we're going to say a very small inverter, 25 watts. And we'll say it's high frequency for convenience. We'll say um, 400 hertz. And the output of here is going to be AC. We'll say 200 volts. So now traditionally what everyone wants to do is close the loop here. Let's not do this because right now the only thing we're paying for is the running the inverter as a free running oscillator. Very similar to when you plug in a transformer on the wall and you're not running anything on the end, you're still paying for the, the magnetization and the stray losses of the transformer here in our case because we're using a battery, it's the actual inverter. Now, once for the cars and 60 hertz, those could take five watts or more. It is the way it is. The inverter will always take a certain amount, but it may not be very much if it's not being loaded. Now, according to our laws of physics, the uh, lens law specifically, in order to load this, we need to close the loop here. And when we close the loop, we create a load here, which creates a counter force, which shows up as current, which gets drawn in here. Now we don't want to do this. So let's not do that. So we're going to delete our loop here. And we'll say this is, you can pick any wire. We're going to pick this one here. And we're going to do our one wire system here. So we're going to put the two diodes on the one wire. So I'm not a good drawer. I'm sorry about that. So 
there's one guy over here. And uh, there's another one there. Like this. And then um, over here would be our DC pulse at this point because we don't have the capacitor. But this would give us. It won't be very much because this is just 200 volts, so it's not really optimized this way, but I'm just trying to explain it, is you may get a volt or two like this. So we need to take it an extra step. So let's run the microwave transformer on this. So here's our microwave transformer right here. And here's a primary side and here's a secondary side. So what we're going to do is we're going to feed into the low voltage primary. So we'll see our 200 volts goes here. Now you see what happens here is we're energizing the primary, but because at this point here, we've got nothing on our secondary here, the core is live. So here's the live core. So what happens here again, it's just magnetization. You're paying for a very, very minimal loss here. So what can you do with this? Again, let's not load it down, but now we got a very, we got our high frequency field. And this is where the magic starts to happen, folks, because as I've been explaining, any high energy field creates an electrostatic potential nearby. And electrostatic, you can do a lot more this is our true potential differences. We can convert back to a traditional form of electricity. And like an electret, as long as we keep the electrical trigger, it will keep providing more or less for free minus the traditional losses, which are very minimal. There's no free lunch, but we could sure enhance it, folks. So with that said, let's. this is our live core. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our two diodes here Again, I'm a really bad drawer. There's one diode here. Another one there, sort of. So this becomes plus, this becomes negative here. So what happens all of a sudden here, we get 80 volts plus. And because at the frequency of the inverter here. So we get 400 hertz, 80 volts. And this will charge up capacitors very quickly. And you could use this to either run pulse or with a filter or cap dump it back into the battery here. So with that said, um, if you follow me again with the uh, lens law, um, we need to close the loop in order to create the counter force here, which shows us current on this side here. Without closing the loop here, there, we're not subject to any of that no more. And we're just using true potential differences to create a medium voltage, which will be very potent, believe it or not, if you do it this way. Now, what's interesting with this concept is there doesn't seem to be a limit. It's like the Bedini setup in a way. So we can set up multiple transformers here and stack them all up, connect them all into the inputs like that. And then, of course, the output here is the high voltage side, and then you do the same thing. And then you got your plus and your minus, your plus and your minus, and here's your 80, here's your other 80. And they're all independent from each other. What's interesting is you can short one of these out, it won't affect any other ones. And it won't stress again because we're not subject to this, the traditional laws of, a, of actually it would be symmetrical regaging because equal each side. So we're not doing that anymore. So you have to throw those laws, those rules out the window completely. So with that said, um, if you read between the lines, 
let's do another system here that could be very interesting. But you didn't hear it from me, folks. Let's scrap the battery. And let's say you just want to have efficient power at home. I know some people don't like the mains idea, but let's cover it anyway. It says I don't think we're doing anything wrong because it's not hacking or anything. So we take the same concept. So here's our mains plug here. This is our mains power. Right here, very bad drawer, I'm sorry. So what we do is we take live, and do the return this and you want to remember when I talked about reactive stages so you want to have to put a high voltage well not high voltage but one that's reactive usually they are so this is the capacitor here and that'll be um, let's say 10 UF um, let's say it's a microwave transfer one kilovolt, but we don't need that much, and we want to be safe because sometimes there's spikes in the reactors, so you don't want your capacitor to jump, right? So we have this in line here, and then we have our microwave transformer here. I don't know if you're starting to follow here how it's going to happen, but now we have our primary side here. We have a reactive stage. So because it's reactive, the little bit of power we would have in normal loss, we're minimizing that even because it's reactive. And we're not looking at current potential in a traditional sensor because we're not closing the loop, so it doesn't matter. So you may as well take advantage of that. Now from the AC mains, you're going to do very good with the microwave transformer. We're just going to label that here. And that's the primary. And here's the secondary. So this is the high voltage side, sorry, the low voltage side, me bad. And this would be the high voltage. But again, we're just interested in the one wire system. So the core is live. And here's our diode system here again, with the two diodes. I'm really bad at drawing these, but you get the idea. So our plus is down here, our minus is here. And with this setup here, it'll be closer to 100 volts. What's interesting is it'll be 60 hertz. So it'll be at 60 hertz. So you could probably use this to power medium loads with. And again, our loop is left open. We're unable to stress it traditionally. There's no counter force going on here. We're dealing with true magnetic potentials and we're converting it back with the one wire system. And again, you need more power, just like the Bedini. We go times two, times three, times four, stack these up and at the DC, either run them individually or in um, parallel to uh, increase the current output. And there you go. So basically that's the essence of what I'm doing. There's multiple configurations, different transformers. As you understand this more, you, you can see that you can resurface just about any kind of oscillator system to work in this application here. So again, probably something the mainstream doesn't want us to know. I'm just trying to bring light to it and show you all what I'm doing here. So I hope you enjoy and thanks for watching and let me know what you think in the comment section. Thank you and have yourselves a great day.